Mm. Ah. Hello everyone, how's it going? Today we're gonna to look into what React JS is all about. One moment, one, one moment. I went to see how many of you guys have subscribed to the channel, but it doesn't look like you have subscribed. Hmm? Wait, wait. But, okay, just kidding. If it's helping you, consider subscribing. If it's not, well, I understand. I need to know, I need to do better. Okay, so today we're gonna to look into what React JS is it's all about and React JS is, is nothing but a web development framework which runs behind a website. So imagine Facebook and uh, this is basically invented by Facebook. Facebook wanted it for their own project and that's why they developed the React JS and Facebook's backend and all the posts that you see, all the different material that comes on on Facebook, that is run on a J React JS backend. That is what makes it very powerful and very fast and very efficient. Uh, to be honest, I'm looking into React JS for myself, so I'm, I'm tr trying to develop on this side project of mine where I think, I think having this React JS background will help me a little bit in doing my project better. So I want to develop that framework, and for that purpose, I'm learning React JS myself. So it, again, as I said, it's going to be more of a beginner's perspective video. So this is more of me documenting my journey. And of course, I wanted to, I thought, why not share it with you guys? That way you'll get to know what my, what my feedback and what my journey and what are my thoughts along while learning this. So let's get into it, let's get started, and I'll show you what the basics of React JS is. So this is kind of a React JS website, and it's called as a weather app, and you can see that it's running on localhost 3000 over here. So it's basically a web server. So the idea of this project is just to take the city, whatever city you want to look for. So I have Chicago, and if I look for New York, and if I just press enter, it'll pull up the information and then show me what the temperature is for New York. So it's communicating with the weather website, and uh, there is an API link between them. It'll give out the, whatever city you're looking for, it'll give out the information right here in the website. Now, le let me show you what, what is the power of React.js, what makes it so special. So let's go here and try to open up YouTube, and I'll show you what the difference between us. So here, if I press anything, so right now we're looking for New York. If I were to search for Chicago, for example, if I say Chicago, and if I press Enter, it's giving me the response right away. So it's giving me the response right in the browser. And you'll notice that the web page itself is not refreshing. And it's giving the response for us right there and then. That's the difference between React.js and some other websites. So if I come into YouTube and if I try, try to open up any web page, so for example, this video which I try to look into, you can see that it's trying to load. This red bar automatically pops up. Let's say if I'm open up another video and notice this red bar. So it is loading. So it's basically the whole web browser, the web page is refreshing in order for me to open up that video. So that's the difference between React.js and this thing. And that's what makes it very powerful. And you can see it's taking a lot of time to load. And, uh, whereas if you go into React.js and if you were to type in whatever you want, whatever search you're trying to do, and uh, say, for example, we're going back and looking for Washington. And it's giving us the response right there and then, very fast, because the web page itself is not, it's not loading. Everything else is the same. It's only changing the city and the display data. And so that is different between React.js and any other websites. And why? how does it do that? So React.js has this functionality where it is able to differentiate between the content that is already there and the content that needs to be presented. So here, the content, the background, the web browser, the page, the button, everything is already there, and it's going to be there for every page. The only thing that's going to be different is the text that is going to be written, and it will render only that. It will not render the whole page, and that is making it very fast and very efficient in displaying our data. So if you notice Facebook, if you open up Facebook, and if you go down, even YouTube has that, if you keep scrolling down, it will keep loading, it will keep keep uh, opening up new videos and showing you more content. 
And that is also a part of React where it doesn't have to refresh the whole page for yourself or it doesn't have different pages for you to look into. And it can, you keep going down, it'll keep showing you different types of data. So that, that's again where React.js uh, comes into picture. So uh, I found this nice tutorial by this gentleman, KG Parajwal. I'll, I'll put the link in the description. And if I forget, let me know in the comment and I'll put it back. But this is, he, he had a very good, simple and easy, very short and sweet write-up and showing what, how to set up React. So this is something called as the virtual DOM and an original DOM. So this is nothing but where uh, virtual and original, uh, these are like two different windows for a website and they compare. So if, if I were to go here and if I type in anything, so uh, say if I type in Chicago, and if I press enter, the virtual DOM, it'll take that information of Chicago and whatever data that is going to be rendered, it will compare that new data with the data that is already there. So the previous data, which was Washington, it will compare that data and this data and see what all is different. Uh, the, maybe the background is different, maybe the color is different or the font is different. Whatever that difference is, it'll compare and it will render only that difference, not everything else. So that is the functionality and that's the advantage and that's where the whole, the uh, virtual DOM is very much important part. The, um, the, the another thing to talk about is the components and components are nothing but functions. So say, for example, if you think about a Facebook post, the Facebook page itself is a component and within that component, there is a post and within that post, there is a comment box and within that comment box, you also have those emojis, the like button, the share button. So all of that comes into play and that, those are what components are all about. And we don't need to go into all details of that for now. We just need to understand the basics so that we can start, get started, at least start running the project and then once as as we go we learn to new things uh, this is another interesting thing react native and this is nothing but it allows to use react to even develop mobile applications so you can develop both android ios and web applications react using this react native guy so that shows how powerful react is and of course the flutter application flutter program that also does the same thing it's also built up on the same purpose. Now, how do you get started with React.js? So the first thing is you want to install Node.js and if you can go to the, go to the node.js.org website, it's a free application. And this is itself, Node.js by itself is a very powerful framework. It's a JavaScript framework. And uh, this combined with React.js is making it even more powerful. So you can in, down, go ahead and download the Linux, well, now I'm using a Linux computer, so it's giving me this Linux option, but whatever uh, operating system you are, it will it will support everything. So whatever you have, just go ahead and download. And then once you have it downloaded, then there is this function, there is this command called npx create react app and whatever your name is. So if I open up a command prompt, uh, I already have something running on my command prompt because of the servers that we are running. So, but if I were to go here, so it's npx, and npx is like pip install for Python. Npx is for more for uh, the Node.js. So you can have npx, and then like they're saying, create hyphen hyphen React app. So coming back to our terminal, we say create hyphen React hyphen app, and the third line is whatever file you want to tell. So if you want to say React application or basic React app, so this is the name of your application. The third argument is nothing but giving the name of the applicant. And uh, you just press enter and it will create the React application, the project for you. So what it does is if I go into back into the web page, it will open up this basic basic React application for you. So it's, it's a very simple, very, very basic, and it's showing you what React is doing. It's a default web page, basically. And I'll show you how the project folder looks like. So let me open up this folder. Right, so uh, this is a basic React app. So the moment I pressed 
I clicked NPX React app, basic React. It will create this project folder for me. So this test React was nothing but a project folder that I created, that I, I created before starting this video. So it's nothing but showing you different types of folders and different types of uh, pages that are available. So this is all that comes automatically created by the react application so you don't need to go and create what the what create this file this html file these folders nothing everything comes pre-built and pre-made by react and this is all thanks to the facebook guys this is how they want it and if you have uh, worked with django uh, the Fl uh, django flask or more with django framework it will also give you something like that so Coming back, uh, coming to this folder, this is how the folder looks like. The public folder is what is displayed on the client side. So what your uh, viewers, what you work, whoever logs into your website, like the HTML page, what they are going to see, that's all available here, like the index.html. And the source files, these are the main guys. These are the people who do all the hard work behind the scenes. And this is nothing but the backstage of your website. And there are some of these applications, some of these pages that are very important. And uh, one of them is the app.js. This is the mastermind of the whole project. And this is the main guy, the app.js. And uh, this is responsible for running the application, running the software behind it. And this is basically the file which, tell, which tells every other file what to do and what not to do. So this is the most important guy and this is the guy who demands the most respect. Respect by respect, I mean the commands, what you're, whatever you're doing, you want to write the right command for it. The index.css is nothing but the style sheet. This gives you more information of how, what kind of font, what kind of image, what kind of background it's going to be using. Index.js. Now this is like the son of app.js. So app.js is like the main guy, the god of this project, who in, instructs, who provides all the information, who, who does everything, and then tells the sun, index.js, to go and render your index.html file. So the HTML file that you see here, the public.html file, this index.html file is controlled by index.js. And index.js is the JavaScript file, which will no, do nothing but take the information what app.js gives and then gives it to the index.html. So the most important guy, as we said, is app.js, and then which gives out information to the index.js, and then index.js gives it to index.html. So if you open up index.html, it's nothing but nothing. There is nothing on it. It's just, it, has, it just has to has division, root, and uh, the, I mean, the whole thing in the top is nothing. This is all nothing. I mean, all the, it's filled with comments. It's, it's filled with uh, basic, basic information, but nothing, nothing available here. But if you look into this body of the web page, so you can see that it's showing you need to enable JavaScript, but there is nothing available here. At, and this is basically the website that is running our weather app, this whole weather app, this whole React app. It's being run by these applications. But the strange thing is there's nothing in the index.html. And that is because whatever is pre whatever is going to be present in this division id.root, it will be run by this index.app.js. So this index.js and app.js, so you can see if I open index.js, it is giving document get element ID by root. So it's looking for that root directory or that root division here in the index.html file and whatever it wants to render, it's going to render in that. So that's the, the, that's the main power of index.js and app.js. So if I go in here, and if I open public here, public folder, and this is index.html file. And if we were to run this index.html file by itself, without the use of React.js, without the use of any of those app.js guys. So if I open with Firefox browser, it will open up this page and you can see that this index.html file, it's just showing that it's a React app and there is nothing available here. It's just a blank screen. 
every and but if you run it through a react app this is what it renders so that's the power of the backend servers whatever who try to render the information the the people who do all the backstage stuff and this is all what react js is all, all about uh, if you are interested in how to make the weather app let me know um, and uh, I, in the next video, I'll show you how to make simple applications using uh, using React app. So far, what I've noticed, it's very easy and it's not too difficult uh, as long as you know what you're trying to do. And if you read a few, a few things a couple of times, it, it'll make sense and it's easy to get a grasp into. So we'll, we'll keep learning. We'll grow, keep growing in this language. And uh, with that, you guys take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.